This is my mother and this is my sister. And my big sister is dead of, of crack. So 12th January 2010. So I'm leaving tomorrow for Haiti, and I guess I really don't know what to expect. I've seen the video images on TV and in the magazines, I've seen photographs and online, but I think in person it's definitely going to be worse, and I think it's going to be like something I've never experienced before. Um, but I'm excited about the possibility of helping and being a part of a team that, that comes in and in a short period of time can hopefully make a difference um, for the people there and particularly the children that we'll be working with. And so I'm excited, I'm a little nervous, kind of anxious. Um, I know it's storm season and the conditions are going to be rough, but I think it's going to be a really good trip. After this earthquake, so many people, I think I can say, hope's gone. Nobody think anything's good will happen to Haiti anymore. But I can say this is Asian hope. Phil Hospital. Well, it's been a really long day with the van breaking down and the heat and the humidity and all the travel. So I'm about to go to bed. This tent is going to be my home for a whole week. And for a lot of the folks around here, a tent like this is the best housing they'll have for a long time. And the patients being discharged from this temporary hospital will go to a whole tent city to live. When we first got here, we reviewed everyone's chart in order to review their past medical history and get a sense of, of what medical issues they are facing. And then we went to each patient as a team with one physician, an RN, and an interpreter. And we asked the patients about what concerns they were having that day. Specifically, uh, we wanted to know about their pain because pain management was very important for this pa patient population um, because there were many amputees. We uh, developed a plan of care and then acted on that. I was expecting a more emergent care, um, and it's been more, you know, chronic care. But it's been very rewarding to work with the patients and the other volunteers. So it's been a very rewarding experience. Again, you know, again, not what I expected, but but rewarding just the same. And for these people, it's all intensified because their lives have been so disrupted. Um, you can tell that there's a lot of stress in everybody's life. I think. The hardest part of today was seeing so many people that had lost their leg or their arm um, during the earthquake. And when we would discharge them, we gave them a tent, some cooking ware, um, maybe a cot and some clothes and some toiletries. And a lot of the time they would ask for more and um, we would have to say no. And that just made me feel like crap <laughs> because we have so much at home and uh, that's all we could give them. Uh, it's just really humbling. One of my first thoughts was, oh my gosh, there's so many amputees, there's so many prosthetics, you know, around, but then I'm just like, I'm seeing one small percentage of the nation and then imagine that throughout Port-au-Prince, it's just, I'm seeing such a small portion of it. It's very different because you live with the patients here. You live in the same conditions and for me made me really appreciate what they're going to have to go through and the conditions that they're going to have to live through until they they have houses built again. Because of because you live amongst them 
amongst your patients, you develop very strong relationships with them because you don't only care for them medically, you also have time to play with the children and to become a part of their family in a sense. <laughs> it's a good day for me because I was in Santa Domingo before and after the earthquake and after they cared for my arm I came here to take care of everyone so I say thank you for everything you've done for me here at Love a Child I take you for God's words because I know God loves me I think the conversation that stands out the most for me is we talked to our translator, Junior, and we asked him, do you have a girlfriend? And he said he had a girlfriend. And we were like, well, what happened? Did you break up? And he said, no, she died in the earthquake. Um, and everyone I've met on this trip um, that was here during the earthquake lost a friend, a family member, um, and it just heartbreaking. So during the earthquake her house fell on her back and it broke her right leg and she had a femur fracture with an external fixation device and now she has pain to sit to sit from sit move from sit to stand and she can't put all her weight on the right leg. Well the patients are the same, but the conditions are a lot different. We don't have supplies. I've run into a lot of people that have uh, leg length discrepancies and they don't have shoes that we can put lifts in. They don't have adequate equipment to rehabilitate with. I have hardly anything to do exercises with, so I'm really scrapping around to come up with um, substitute ways to do things. So it's really... Uh, challenging to, to do it but we're here to meet that challenge so we don't have any 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 things we can we can share with them just say thank you and thank you very much for every single doctors for every single family because I know they get so many doctor nurses who come here they leave all family and come to take care of so many people you don't know you don't know you leave your country and come here to help people I will thank them. There are there are so many, so many people who needs to be thankful by all the Asian nation. It was a very special, a special moment in my life because I've been met lots of lots of people from other countries, from um, from America, from Brazil, and now I think. I learn a lot from them. I learn how to be good, how to be, to be kind, how to be, like, be helpful for anyone who need, who needs help. I came thinking that I was gonna do more than I did, but you just feel like, I guess my feeling is, you just take what you have, and wait to see what God does with it. Just my feel. I feel like what I brought is a meager offering, but I pray that God will multiply it. <laughs> so tonight's our last night in Haiti. Um, we just charged the last patient from the clinic today, and um, this has been a really eye-opening experience. Uh, originally, when I signed up for this trip, Children of the Nations was looking for medical personnel and communication specialist, um, and they announced it at my church, and I just really felt like God was calling me to help um, in this situation. And now that I've been here, what I'll remember the most are the people that I've met and worked with, um, the relationships we've built with the patients that have been so um, just rewarding. And um, I've also made some really good friendships with the Haitian staff that we've worked with. Um, and I'm now friends with uh, Lami and Estabi and Remixon and we're even friends on Facebook and they're just great guys that have 
um, just meant a lot to me in this short time. And now when I pray for Haiti um, from my home in San Diego, I'll be praying for my friends. And uh, that's really uh, a neat thing. And uh, I won't forget what's happening here what has happened here and hopefully I can continue to help in some way from home and encourage others to help the people of Haiti.